What's up everyone, it's Jake here and welcome back to Almost Vintage Style. That's, is that usually how I say it? I can't remember. The gardeners have been here all morning and it's been like interrupting my recording process and I work a lot of overtime at work and my, plus I have to drive three hours in total every day, uh, or almost three hours every day. It's, it's a nightmare. So I don't have much time to record videos and when I do, I need to take advantage of it and the gardeners have been ruining it. I'm kind of a mess today, okay? I'm sorry. But I am actually very excited for today's review. Um, I have, As you probably know, I have been doing some videos lately where I have some affiliate links. I know that's something I said I would never do before, and maybe I'll talk about that as a rant later in this video. Not right now, I promise. And um, But today is not gonna be one of those. We are talking about this jacket, uh, something people have actually been asking about. Um, people don't actually ask me about videos that often, but they do ask me about this one. Um, and this is, my favorite leather jacket. Aside from a couple other products, it's my favorite thing I own. Um, and it could end up being my all time favorite thing that I've ever owned. Uh, but this is the jacket, one of the two jackets that has caused me to switch completely to vintage leather jackets, a topic I'll talk more about uh, later on. This is my late 1940s or early 1950s sport clad horse hide leather jacket. Um, and as you can tell already, this thing fits me so ridiculously well, like insanely well, uh, like perfectly. The best fitting leather jacket I've ever owned at any point at any weight, any, you know, in shape level, because I've been at a few. Um, this is the best fitting jacket I've ever had, and it's crazy. So we gotta talk about this jacket, I, um, and why I love it so much and why it's so great, and maybe talk a little bit about why I've transitioned to vintage leather jackets. Like I said, I'll dive more into that in the future um, when I make my, especially I'm also gonna make a new my entire jacket collection video, um, which I I did a previous one that I've released not too long ago, but I'm gonna make a new one, obviously. Anyway, this jacket I've owned for less than a year, actually. I picked this up at Inspiration 2023 in April, um, and I'm shooting this video in November, hopefully releasing in November, maybe December or January. I, that's the way I gotta shoot my videos, honestly. Um, so, yeah, um, this jacket is amazing. It's gorgeous, it fits me perfectly. Um, when I started getting into vintage leather jackets, uh, a couple, I've been trying to get in them for a few years. It's just such a, a rabbit hole, which obviously leather jackets already is a rabbit hole. And then you have vintage leather jackets, which is even more of a rabbit hole. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I am an expert on vintage leather jackets. Compared to the people who really are experts on vintage leather jackets, I'm nowhere near that. I am somebody who is, I'm in terms of style, like it's, I'm almost vintage style. Uh, people keep saying now that I have all these vintage jackets and I do have some vintage trousers now, um, a couple other vintage pieces. People are like, oh, you should just be vintage style now, which, you know, I just kind of jokingly say, like, yeah, I just don't want to change my name, but I'm still almost vintage because I'm not entirely vintage. I, not all my stuff is vintage. I have a lot of repro stuff still. So, and I'm kind of like into repro, kind of into some stuff that's been modernized, kind of into vi just pure vintage. Sometimes I just go full cosplay outfits, like for like 1930s to 50s cosplay outfits. Sometimes I kind of change it up. And I, in terms of style, I'm into all of it. So I think overall I do actually very well, uh, or very aptly fit the phrase, uh, jack of all trades, master of none but better than a master of one. That is the full phrase, by the way. It actually kind of been, uh, I didn't know that for a long time either. Only recently have people been uh, bringing back the full phrase, which is that it's actually, jack of all trades is actually a compliment, not an insult. Um, and I do think that in some ways applies to me, not that I'm like a expert on everything. I know a little bit about a lot of things. Um, so I'm not gonna be your big expert on vintage leather jackets. I'm, I don't focus just on boots, I definitely, if you want to learn about denim, go on Super Future or talk to some other like vintage denim experts and stuff like that. I, I know some about it. I get a lot of information from those people, um, but I'm not a perfect master of that. I am not a perfect expert on style. I mean, you know, guys like Derek Guy and Peter Peter Zatolo um, and um, Ethan uh, Ethan Newton from Bryce Lands. Uh, uh, Peter Satolo is Urban Composition on Instagram, by the way. Um, all fan, all, actually, I've never talked to Ethan, but, you know, the, uh, actually, I've only talked to Peter. Peter's a great guy. But those people are all much more stylish than me. Guys like Kevis Monzi on Instagram, also way more stylish. I know a little bit about clothing. I know a little bit about, you know, whatever. I might cut all this. 
anyway, what would, suffice to say is I'm not an expert on leather jackets or vintage leather jackets. And the way I actually got this, I had to give a shout out to my friend uh, John, aka Leather Jacket John, um, on in, that's what his name is on Instagram. Uh, his name is G O J E O on the Fedora Lounge. He definitely is much more of a vintage leather jacket expert than myself, and I also owe some uh, assistance to my buddy Cool Leather Jackets, uh, who goes by Mark on the Fedora Lounge. He's Cool Leather Jackets on Instagram, great guy as well. Definitely knows more about vintage than I do. And there's a few others as well, obviously. Uh, Terry Mitchell, another guy that, or T Mitchell, also knows more about vintage jackets. I've actually gotten some jackets from him specifically. Uh, so yeah, there's other people that I'm learning from in terms of vintage leather jackets. And John especially, uh, I have to give a huge shout out to because he is the reason I have this jacket. So when I walked into Inspiration LA 2022, uh, literally within like a minute or two, I run into John, who I've already known and met before. And, you know, we say hi, Ali and I, my wife and I are with, we're together and, you know, we say hi to him. And he takes me over, he's like, hey, you gotta check out this booth. They have a bunch of really great jackets. Um, and there's one I think you should try on. And he pointed this jacket out. He said, I really wanted this one, but it was too big for me. And John is, we're kind of perfect. <laughs> it's great to know John for many reasons. He's a great guy, expert in jackets, uh, especially vintage ones. Uh, but also what's great is that he's like kind of one size smaller than me um, in terms of like his fit preferences and his actual, you know, body size. So if a jacket is like slightly too big for him that he's after, it ends up can, can just kind of go to me. Um, so I had to take advantage of that. I feel bad, but it's like, no, it works out great. And he he tried this jacket on, it's too big for him. He's like, it'll probably fit you. So I try it on, T turns out fits me amazingly, and it's exactly what I'm looking for. I wanted to get more into vintage leather jackets, but one of the things was I wanted a light to medium brown vintage leather jacket. And honestly, it's not that easy to find those. Um, they're mostly dark brown. Uh, mid to dark brown. There are some lighter ones, but you don't see them that often. A lot of black ones and a lot of dark, decent amount of dark brown. And a lot of the dark brown ones that are available easily and cheaply are like those like civilian bomber style jackets. I'm not a huge fan of that style to be perfectly honest with you. I wanted like traditional like half belt, straight zip or cross zip sports jacket or aviator style, stuff like that. That's more my preference. And obviously this is that. So I mean, just look at how this thing fits me. I'm obviously gonna show you photos and everything, but it's perfect, and the color is just glorious. It's like this kind of golden, slight orangey, yellow ochre kind of color. It's amazing. I've rarely seen anything like this jacket in terms of color. Now, obviously, you see vintage photos, you're not gonna really see the color, but I mean, if you go through this, like the catalogs that I've seen a lot of catalog images, they're mostly dark brown or they're black. Um, and if you see like vintage jackets popping up for sale and in, and in books, they're mostly dark brown or black or kind of like if they're deer skin, they're usually like a white or like an off white color. This is not super common. Like, you look at the Tanaka books, you will not see a color like this very often. So I was over the moon with this thing and I still am. Um, still my favorite jacket. I've gotten quite a few cents then like in vintage. I've sold off the other ones, my new ones. This is perfect. The sleeve length is pretty much perfect. It's not too long, which is crazy. Um, the length is great. Um, and I'll talk about that again in a little bit. The color is nice. The, the patina or like kind of aging, I wouldn't really call this patina because it's more like it's scraping off. It looks nice. It's not too much. And the condition is fantastic. It looks great unzipped. It looks great zipped up. As you saw, it fits great in both ways. I mean, this is this jacket is the reason why I switched to vintage leather jackets completely because of the fit. And in fairness, I have yet to get another vintage jacket that fits me as perfectly as this, but they are still in general fitting me better than the new ones. But also just look at the condition on this thing. Sorry, this is like me kind of bragging about how great of a find this jacket is. And I'm sorry, I don't care. I'm not going to apologize. I mean, look at the, the labels. Perfect. The liner, look at this, this cotton flannel liner is beautiful and it's in perfect condition. The sleeve liner, different cotton, it's like a kind of a brown cotton. It's not a, like a stiff cotton drill. Also perfect. The, it's just gorgeous. Um, the, the stitching is all pretty solid. There's no major flaws. I am just over the moon with this jacket. Okay, so 
and it clearly just fits me well and it feels comfortable. There's no restriction. Like I would say, like I, I was talking about how like the deer skin from Free Wheelers is more comfortable than other leather and that's why I'd reach for it, but it was always too tight because I'd have to size differently because my chest is pretty big. I have like a 42 and a half to 43 inch chest as of now, I'm actually losing a little bit more weight. I'm on the way to where I want to be. I'm like one, I'm like 167 right now. Um, and so I have about a 30 to 30 and a half inch waist, you know, and so I have a huge drop now and I would like it to be even bigger, but it's not, but this still fits me well. And so I need the chest room and the shoulder room. Um, I have like 17 and a half to 18 inch shoulders. My shoulders aren't super wide, but they're very tall because I have decently big traps, not the biggest, but that I need a little bit of room there too, and but I also have short arms because I'm not that tall, and this just works. I don't know what size this is. It doesn't have a size in it. Whatever. I have probably a 40 or 42. I'm gonna guess. Fits me great, um, and it's just beautiful. The color is amazing. Um, I have other jackets that like, are maybe cooler. I got this thing for a steal of a price. Um, when I told some other guys, like some of the other vintage guys that know what this, you know what this is and how well it fits. Uh, Terry, actually, Terry Mitchell said, you probably still don't realize how good of a deal you got on this jacket, even after I was telling it was my favorite jacket ever. So you probably still don't realize how good of a deal you got um, and how much of a crazy jacket this is. Because again, you, I've never seen another thing like, I've seen one other. Somebody else on the Fedora launch has a similar jacket to this. And it is also a sport clad almost the same style. Um, so that's it. It's just the color is part of the thing that's so rare. And again, I'm not gonna say I'm a vintage leather jacket expert. But yes, okay, that's me gushing over how amazing this jacket is. Now, uh, from the people I've talked to, I know quite a few guys that are that are more knowledgeable about vintage than I am. Uh, based on like the zipper and some other stuff, it's probably late 40s or early 50s. Um, and y the thing is that you'll notice, so one of the one of the downsides to like the later 40s, early 50s styles is they're not as intricate as the 30s ones. Like mid 30s to late 30s and into early 40s is kind of the golden age of leather jackets. Like 37 to 42 is considered by a lot of vintage guys to be the epoch or the epitome basically or the best time, I don't know, oh, whatever. I got a lot of caffeine in me right now so I'm probably, my vocab is just going nuts right now. It's the best time for vintage leather jackets. Uh, you get the cool fancier backs. I do actually have an original Caesar Hercules. I will do a video on that one soon. Um, and you'll see the fancier backs, the pleats and stuff like that, um, and, and all of that. And that's, and kind of when we get the more, what we think of as modern style leather jackets, like everything after that is really very similar from that late, mid to late 30s to early 40s time. Um, but in the, in the 40s, they kind of start simplifying things a little too much. If there's any downside to this jacket, that's it. Very simple back design. It's it's overall very simple. Again, not a downside really, but that is kind of one of like the slight downsides. That's one of the things you can gives it away as like that style. Now, well, some of the interesting things about vintage jackets. So I want to talk about this to help you out a little bit. Again, I'm not an expert, but uh, a few things about vintage jackets about why I like them more. Um, and I think this is important. I know this is very rambly. I'm sorry, I don't care. This is how I make videos. Uh, you, you know, you don't have to watch them and I'm sure I lose a lot of viewers because of that. Anyway, it's, the fit is definitely different. Um, the biggest issue for me with modern jackets is they're too slim. Uh, which, you know, I now, I am in shape. I am in very good shape. I am not in the best shape. There's definitely people who are much better shape than me, but I'm in generally very good shape um, at this point. And modern jackets are too slim for me because I lift weights. And so I have a big drop. Not the, again, not the biggest drop. There's people, you know, the true bodybuilders and athletes and all that stuff that got me way totally beat. But again, 42 and a half to 43 inch chest, 30 and a half inch waist, right? Significant drop at this point. And these, they're, they're too straight. And it's not just me. Uh, they actually fit me better when I was out of shape. And there's other guys that have different body types to me, and you will see that these a lot of modern jackets just kind of fit a little bit weird. Um, not all of them, but they just they they fit odd. Very long sleeves, very long in the body, and it's very odd. And even the proper repro jackets, a lot of times they make them longer or they slim them down, especially the arms. So a few things that I've noticed about vintage leather jackets that I prefer, you may not. Um, but the, you also might want to start looking into vintage leather jackets for these reasons. Um, the sleeves are wider in general. This is actually a relatively slimmer sleeve 
for this era. Um, I have some other, like I have another 50s jacket, a couple of 50s jackets, but the sleeves are definitely wider. Um, 30s ones will be a little slimmer, but I would still say the repros I have are even slimmer. Um, and at least in my experience, again, you can ask some other guys. I will, I will, I'm probably gonna try to ask the guys if I can link you to them for information if you would like to talk to Terry Mitchell, Cool Leather Jackets, and um, Leather Jacket John, because they, I would say, there's other people too, but they all know more than I do about vintage. But generally, the sleeves are a bit wider, especially in for, late 40s, mid to late 40s and early 50s. The jackets are a bit bigger uh, and looser than 30s jackets, just so you know. Um, 50s, especially early 50s, they're very short. 40s, they're actually pretty long. The other thing is that's very interesting is most of the jackets people are doing repros of, like Real McCoys, um, Freewheelers, and a lot of the Japanese brands, and even some of the Western brands. A lot of what they're reproing is is honestly that late 30s, early 40s golden age style jacket. Um, and the thing is, a lot of stuff that's available that's still very good is actually 40s and 50s stuff. So you'll notice they're not the same. Like nobody's reproing stuff like this. So some of the cool details of this jacket are the sleeve, the way the sleeves are done. Now you notice there's no fancy cuffs or anything, like you know straps or buttons or anything. Almost every repro jacket has that. None of the, the vintage ones, a lot of the vintage ones I own because of the era I own from, they don't have that. No, nothing. Just this kind of cool little angled thing here. It's just kind of a cuff design, but no buttons, no snaps, nothing. Um, they're simpler like that. And that's kind of cool, it's just different. The other thing is if you notice, I don't know if you can see it here. Maybe you can if I do this, I'm not sure. There's an angle to the sleeve that is brilliant that no, I've never seen a repro brand do this. And Reaper Brands, if you're listening, which you're probably not, do this. So when the when the jacket sits out like this, hopefully you can see this. It's the jacket sleeve is a little bit longer here than it is here. So and that fits the hand better because you know you can cover this area of the hand a little bit better. More you, this can be longer than this can because this is where the palm is. So I don't know if I can show you like here where my hand is sitting, um, but like it kind of goes out and it's a little bit shorter here and it actually fits better. That is so cool, and I've never seen a repro brand really do that. Maybe some of them do, and I'm just not aware of it, or I just haven't tried the certain models, but that is definitely not something you see often. It's really cool, and it is actually noticeable on my jacket. So that is really cool. Love it. Uh, like I said, sleeves are a little bit longer. The jacket, The another thing that's very interesting, and I've noticed this with several of my vintage leather jackets, at least two of them that I own, and I've and it, three of them actually. One of the wool one, this one and the other, the Square Pocket Sierra Sportswear that I just got, they don't have a drop. That is a really interesting and unique thing. Uh, also, no inner pockets. Those inner pockets, that's an, I don't think, I don't know how many vintage jackets have it, but almost none of them do. They, that's like a modern thing for phones, I think, or wallets, maybe people, I don't know when they started doing that, uh, but not a single one of the vintage jackets I own has an inner pocket at all. So. Just so you know, you're not gonna get that. If you think, if you feel like you need it, you're not gonna get it. Uh, none of the 60s or older jackets I, that I own. And I own jackets from the 60s, I own from the 90s or 80s, I can't tell which one the Vanson is, I'm not sure. I own from the 60s, several from the 50s, at least one from the, two from the 40s, or at least one from the 40s, maybe two, and one from the 30s or, or 1940. But that's, that's still technically the 30s decade, if you didn't know. Decades end with the zero, they start with the one. And same thing with centuries. Anyway, jacket doesn't really have a drop. And this is a few, I've noticed with a few jackets that I own. The, the, the sport, the wool sport cloud that I own, this sport cloud that I own, and the Sierra Sportswear. If you hold it up completely, you'll notice there's no, there's basically, there may be a tiny, well actually if I hold it up like normally, it's basically no drop. So this jacket has what I would consider a relatively longer back length than I would normally want, um, which would be, I think it's like a 24, 24 and a half inch back length. It actually looks good on me, but usually that would mean the front's gonna look way too long on me. But it doesn't, because it doesn't really have a drop. So it actually looks, honestly, pretty much perfect on me from the front. And these are very high rise jeans, by the way. These are my Woods Mountain like Tatsunosuke jeans that I absolutely adore, best fitting jeans I've ever owned. Um, and these, so these are the highest rise like that I own and it's still not crazy long on me. Hopefully you can see that. 
feels nice. That's a really cool thing and it's definitely different. So if you're somebody who likes, depending on what your body's like and kind of what size you are and what you like and, and the rise of your jeans and everything, a lot of people do prefer a pretty decent front drop. A lot of these like 40s and 50s jackets, which again are some of the more generally available ones at, at relatively affordable prices and in pretty decent conditions, are not gonna have that drop, just so you know. Um, what I noticed is like my Sears Hercules, which is like a mid to late 30s design, and mine is a later 30s jacket, that has a drop. And so I think that's what a lot of people are reproing is those that golden era of jackets where they do have more of a drop because they are a little bit a little bit shorter in general um, than these like these 40s and 50s jackets, which the 40s ones are a bit longer, the 50s ones are a bit shorter, um, at least in general. Okay, especially like the motorcycle jackets from the 50s, the early 50s motorcycle jackets were very short, which I love. That's the other thing. So one of the things I thought when I was getting into vintage jackets is that oh they were all going to be shorter. Uh, they're not actually. A lot of them are quite long, um, and part of it is like the drop difference. Like I said, they don't actually have much of a front drop, um, and different styles will be different. So like uh, 40s jackets, relatively long. 50s motorcycle jackets, especially the early era, pretty short in general. Part of why a lot of jackets are longer today is I think actually because specifically the Buco jackets were relatively long for motorcycle jackets. It was something that uh, Cool Leather Jackets, Mark po uh, posted about, which kind of was a revelation. Um, and that's probably the most, one of the most famous vintage leather jackets. And that's partly, I think maybe, not saying I'm right, this is a theory, why people made some of the jackets longer, one of the reasons. Actual 50s, other brands from the early 50s are actually quite short. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but then like 30s jackets will be slightly shorter, uh, 40s ones a bit bigger and longer, uh, kind of just going along with the trends of the time. Like the 1930s, the trend was very big trousers, um, very wide, very generous trousers and fairly slim and tighter, shorter tops for men. 40s, it was a bit more evened out. Um, and then the 50s, it's kind of similar. And then it starts to trend towards slightly slimmer stuff later on in the 60s. Obviously, you have slimmer looks like most famously Steve McQueen in The Great Escape in the early, which was filmed in the early 60s. He actually had his chinos slimmed down. Um, They're supposed to be, you know, like World War II style chinos, but he actually had them slimmed down. Um, not to an insane degree, but he did actually have them slimmed down. So that's when you start getting the slimmer preferences. So. Anyway, again, vintage experts could correct me on all this stuff. This is all generalizations, but you will actually notice that not all vintage jackets are going to fit the same. You can't just say in general, oh, they're all going to be like this. No, because it's actually a wide range of years and styles and things like that and different makers. So it is not actually completely universal. Um, but what I have noticed in general for vintage leather jackets that could be helpful, shoulders are generally a bit wider. In general, honestly, with all of them, they're, they generally have wider shoulders. Uh, which is great for me um, and uh, they are not as like slim uh, you do get more generous fits but not so basically the thing is like I always knew with the jackets I was buying like the modern ones Japanese or, or even or, or not um, I would need to undersize in the chest because even when I was out of shape I always kind of had a larger chest for my height and um, you know, I needed, and I'm not very tall, I'm 5'7", so 43 inch chest, 5'7", you know, that's a weird ratio, right? Um, and so vintage jackets do generally fit me better in that way, but they're not all going to be shorter. Some of them are longer, but it looks correct, if that makes sense. Like, it's proportional. They're not these slim tubes that have been, like, lengthened in a weird way, right? Like, they do actually have some taper to them for the most part. So. Yeah, that's another thing. No inner chest pockets in general. Um, yeah, I, I'm trying to think of what else. But they, the thing is condition is going to be difficult. Uh, you can't always judge it perfectly. Um, it, it is more of a rabbit hole and is more difficult, honestly. And you have to be patient. You have to keep looking. You have to know people. Like The biggest thing is I was very patient getting into vintage leather jackets. I mean, the first one I got for free, that's just lucky. And again, that's because I know people. Like... And not, not that I know more people than other people do. The reason, sorry, I mean, that sounds so arrogant. I'm sorry, maybe it is, and I don't mean it to be. Like, other people know more people than me, right? Like, there's vintage dealers that know way more. They, ha they have the connections, you know what I mean? And, and guys like John and Mark and Terry have more connections than I do, you know what I mean? 
but it's just because I'm interested in leather jackets and because I talk to all these guys, that's why I know people. It's not because I have an Instagram account and I have this tiny YouTube channel that doesn't matter. You know what I mean? That's, sorry, you know. But you know people because you are interested in these things. Like I have people ask me, oh, I see this, this looks cool. How do I get this? You, honestly, part of it is you have to put in the time and show genuine interest and talk to people and then you can start to get connections. You know what I mean? And you can get those connections no matter, um, it's different than connections through the YouTube world. Like, oh, you know, like I get, you know, collaboration offers and stuff like that. It's no, it's just like your genuine interest. Like I've been a leather jacket nerd for like 11 or 12 years now. Um, and I've been talking to people on like Fedora Lounge and some places on Instagram and things like that for a long time. You go to in-person vintage events you know, um, and through those people that you talk, you meet new people and you talk to other people, uh, you get friends that send you, hey, look at this cool thing that popped up in your size because it's not my size, right? You know, stuff like that. You, you just constantly scour Fedora Lounge, Yahoo Auctions, Japan, and all these other places and that's how you get stuff. People ask me how I get my vintage leather jackets. I've gotten some through in-person events. I've gotten them through um, eBay, through people I know on Instagram, through Japanese dealers, through, you know, Fedora, all these places, like there is no one place that I've gotten jackets from. Like people ask, oh, where's the best place to find them? Everywhere, that, and that is, and that's exactly what I was worried about when I got into vintage leather jackets is it's not easy to get them. It's way more difficult to get them um, and to get the right one in a way because you have to know the maker, the quality, the condition, the fit, whether or not the person actually knows what they have, whether they're being honest, whether the measurements are accurate, it is more difficult. Because if they're wrong about the measurements, and I've had this issue happen, I got this gorgeous California sportswear jacket from Japan, and the measurements would have fit me perfectly, and I get the jacket, and it's way bigger than what the measurements are. Now, I've bought stuff from, like, I bought freewheelers jackets from Yahoo Auctions Japan and free with those, you know, shirts. And I know I can take a look at that shirt and compare it to other people I know who own free with product. I can ask them what the sizing is actually like. I can, I can look on other websites and compare them and be like, okay, if this person's slightly off, then I'll be okay. And I've always been okay. They've always been exactly pretty much what I figure. You don't have that for vintage leather jackets. You have to hope that they're right, or you're such a vintage leather jacket expert that you know what the size of these jackets are anyway, in which case you don't need to ask whether or not, you know, what a rabbit hole vintage leather jackets are. You already know that, right? So yeah, it's difficult. Guys, it's the most rambly video I've ever made. Um, sorry, whatever, hopefully you still like it. Um, this kind of actually turned into kind of how to get into vintage leather jackets. I'll probably have to retitle it a little bit. But yeah, it, it is a rabbit hole um, and it might not be worth it for you. I definitely put in a lot of time before I really started buying ones. And um, I only bought stuff, I got one for free because the guy knew it was gonna fit me and it did, right? And then, and that was kind of just, that was honestly just like the push I needed. And I'm pretty sure he knows that's uh, um, JCSD on, on Instagram. Uh, he's also on the Fedora Lounge. Uh, he, kind of, I think he just kind of knew that was the push I needed maybe. I don't know. Uh, thank you, by the way, for that. Uh, awesome guy, really cool leather jacket collection, by the way, very excellent photographer as well, um, who lives in California. And uh, he's fantastic. So that was kind of the push I needed. And then this one was in person and then the next couple were in person and then I could start buying things sight unseen and feel more confident about it. One of them went poorly, the rest actually all went really well. Uh, and so I moved, you know, that one that didn't fit right, ended up going to Mark. Uh, actually, because uh, it ended up fitting his measurements. So yeah, it, it is definitely more of a risk. It really is. And um, you know, you have to do all these other things. You gotta go to the vintage events. You gotta, I think you need to do that stuff or buy from people you really, really know already that you're already friends with in order to start getting into this stuff or go to actual vintage stores, whatever it is, you gotta start to figure that stuff out on your own if it's worth it for you. Um, for me, obviously, it's the right way to go. I don't know where this is gonna take me in the future. Who knows if I'm only gonna buy vintage leather jackets in the future, if how many of these I'm gonna sell off or whatever. You know, I, I buy and sell and get rid of leather jackets more than anything else. I'm not consistent with those at all, and I'm never gonna pretend at this point that I am. So, 
Yeah, anyway, that's that was my weird rambly video about this sport clad jacket and why it's my favorite jacket I've ever owned. I mean, it's just, I love it. It fits so good. It feels so comfortable. I, it's barely even have to think that I have it on and I think it looks brilliant, like with my outfits and stuff like that. I love it, I, you know. If I could have this jacket as like part of my uniform, this would be my uniform jacket, right? My cartoon character fit. All that stuff's gotta change now because look at all the vintage jackets now. Anyway, I hope that was helpful in some way. Probably wasn't, but whatever. <laughs> I talked about what I wanted to talk about. You know, this video changed like part way through. Um, but this is how, I, this is what I wanted to talk about. And hopefully you got something out of it. Also, you gotta be aware of the shoulders getting fried on vintage leather jackets too. These aren't too bad actually, these are pretty good. That's the biggest problem area. So make sure you check that out. Anyway, that's my sport clad jacket. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Thank you all for watching. See you all next time.